Amazing. Thank you, Ivy. It's an honor to be here with the uh, Pi Ladies. It's my very first conference. I'm hailing all the way from Bangkok, and I'm the group product manager of a company called Brunkers that specializes in open finance and open banking. Um, I'd like to introduce everyone here today to our very all-star panelist, where we have had some of the brightest engineering leaders in the Python community welcoming us today. Let me welcome uh, Maya Ishida, who has organized the Pi Ladies Tokyo group since 2014. Um, she's also involved in the Pi Ladies Caravan project, who is supported by the PyCon Japan Association, where they do a lot of roadshows and events outside of Tokyo. And let's also give a round of applause to Michaela Reitz, the Director of Operations at Python Philippines at uh, Pi Ladies uh, Manila, and is also a fellowship member at the Python Software Foundation. So warm welcome to you as well. Our next panelist, warm, warm welcome to uh, Joanne Park, um, who is a member of the Pi, 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 <laughs> oh my gosh, PyCon community in Korea and PyCon APAC. And lastly, a warm welcome and hailing from Taiwan, Winnie Key, who is chief of PyCon Taiwan and a software engineer. So thank you for joining this conference, ladies. Um, to start off, let's kick things off. Our topic today is what are the challenges that you have faced in your, you know, kind of uh, as a woman in technology? And I want to call upon Maya to uh, give us a little bit of an introduction of that and how you overcome any challenges and what you've experienced. So over to you, Maya. Uh, yeah, so the most challenging thing was that there were no roles models close by. So first, my company had only a few women engineers, especially uh, almost new graduated or uh, two or three years. So when I was a recent graduate, women were just beginning to work as engineers. There was no woman I could talk to about it. So it is increasing very much, very, very much uh, these days through at Japan. I was absolutely lucky to have found the engineering community, uh, such as the pilots. So although there were no many, there were different three female role models, and I was able to befriend them and hear many stories. Amazing. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. a great thing to have a community of like-minded individuals that can lean mm -hmm. on each other for yeah. support and advice. Michaela, over to you. Oh, I think it's the, uh, the main challenge uh, is similar to <laughs> the same as Maya. Uh, in uh, in engineering teams, uh, it's usually just one or three girls <laughs> in the uh, engineering team. And then uh, that's even considering that it's a large engineering team. Um, like out of 50, there's only three uh, women. Um, how I overcame? I think... Um, um, my a little bit tomboyish uh, personality <laughs> kind of made it uh, easier for me to blend in because I kind of became one of the boys. Um, not saying that that's the right way. Uh, it just kind of helped. Absolutely. And uh, let me ask for Joanne. I also like the female engineer role model. Uh, as a mother of two children, I took parental leave for two years after giving birth to my second ch ch children. Uh, I received a response from the company say uh, they could not accept me after my parental leave. Uh, so I have no choice but uh, to look for another company. <laughs> I also felt anxious that I might not be able to continue my career while raising a child for two years. While raising a child, I worked on personal projects and tried to learn new skills. Working on personal Python projects while raising a child uh, brought me comfort and peace of mind. But uh, it's harder to find the time for personal project while raising a child. So I always felt like I was running out of time. 
since uh, I I have a lot of women uh, on team that didn't I since I didn't uh, have a lot of women on team, I've been thinking about how we should we have a, a more female role model uh, as a mother. <laughs> I uh, we see we have had more female developer who went down that path first. Absolutely. And I think you're living the reality experience right now, being a mom and an engineer at the same time. You're the perfect role model for my daughter to look up to as well. Yeah, absolutely. And finally, Winnie. Um, I think like Maya and Makala, I also the only one female staff in my group team. My team have six team members and I'm the only one a female member and sometimes I will feel isolated and uh, struggle to connect with my colleagues um, especially for the very first three months to enter my company but um, and then I found some way to overcome these challenges maybe you can try to adjust your mindset and try to engage in with your colleagues and it, uh, maybe you can foster uh, your familiarity in your work environment and you will truly feel a sense of belonging. Got it, got it. Yeah, some really good takeaways there. You know, what I what I heard throughout this kind of dialogue was, you know, the, the aspect of connection being very important. Um, I heard that blending in was something that is probably not the best outcome, but a smart outcome to get people on side and influence people, especially in engineering teams, which can, sh which can have an imbalanced ratio of male to female employees. And then there's the added um, kind of takeaway of support and leaning on support structures that are relatively outside of uh, the, the workplace, like pie ladies or certain groups and clubs. You know, workplace culture being a, a key thing to productivity, efficiency, and of course, happiness. You know, in your opinion, how, how do you think workplace culture in tech industries actually impact women? And what, what changes, if you could just name one particular change that you'd love to see in 2024 and beyond, you know, what would that, what would that look like? So let me ask uh, Maya for her thoughts. Mm. So oh, I, I think we can choose more option for job. So one of the industries where work from home is prevalent, so which may make it uh, easy to work after marriage and while raising children and so that, don't you? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I definitely agree with you there. Work from home and flexibility is one of the key aspects to being able to balance everything because someone's got to put dinner on the table, wake up the kids to go to school, but also earn an income, be independent and be happy at the same time, right, with a fulfilling life. Um, and let me ask Michaela. Um, I think... Uh... <laughs> Code of conduct, I mean, it's very simple. We do it all the time in PyCon, right? But code of conduct and like a strong code of conduct and properly enforced one because, um, I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, the, I'm not the first person, the, uh, victim <laughs> for this in the workplace, but I saw, uh, I once, uh, experienced in an environment where it wasn't enforced. I, I did, it didn't have a code of conduct and it wasn't enforced. And, uh, two women I worked with side by side, uh, I was shocked that <laughs> they were, uh, that it wasn't handled well. And, um, yeah, yeah, uh, most of the other, uh, work environments that I worked, uh, for, for um, had that except this uh, one company. So, I mean, it affected them really, uh, like, for years. Uh, so, yeah, that's sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so <clears throat> if I understand correctly, it would be around strong execution on the code of conduct, right? Especially in company culture and the guidebooks that we're, yeah. we're, we all have. <laughs> um, and Joanne? Hmm. I need a more uh, lower model. Uh, and uh, uh, educations uh, and um, uh, social support. 
Yeah, the social support too. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the the role model aspect is one of those things where you have your friends around you, you have your <clears throat> workplace colleagues around you. But then outside of that, we've got communities like Pi Ladies. But th- so sometimes there needs to be more, right? Not just like there needs to be like maybe mentorship and that kind of uh, one-on-one um, guidance from someone that is a role model it also in the engineering community and hopefully we can we can find some friends today um and finally winnie what do you think mm, i think the key is to create a culture that values what people bring not just by our gender for example maybe we can have more flexible policies they understand the need um, for balance. Uh, just like Maya said, uh, work from from home policy. Yes. And also, I think highlighting successful women uh, to motivate others may be another solution. So I think that's how yeah, um, the book, it, that's how we can make a better tech for, workplace. Absolutely. Amazing opinions, d- defining the culture and actually influencing change with defining culture, irregardless of gender. And I really like that because I think, you know, it really leads into our next topic of gender bias and stereotypes, right? I'm a person where I don't identify or self-identify as a man or self-identify as a woman. Um, and I have no kind of connotation towards he, she or anything like that. But how has gender bias and stereotypes affected your professional journey, you know, whether whether that's an interview, whether that's in a promotion, whether that is, you know, trying to get your point across in a, in a scrum meeting, um, you know, what other strategies have you used to kind of navigate uh, a, a, a situation where there has been a bias? Ah, I forgot to ask who to talk. <laughs> Maya, over to you. <laughs> It's difficult, difficult um, question. So because uh, maybe I'm don't notice the my action or um, my activities. So although uh, I didn't realize it, it it at the time, I am sure that I must have taken some detour my in my career or my jobs or something. And uh, I didn't think there is anything wrong with touching a detour, but I could have found what I wanted to do and who I wanted to be much sooner. And so, uh, so uh, sure. So, uh, I, so long time, uh, I don't have um, any sponsor or mentors or uh, role models for women. But um, when I joined that community at first time in Java community, but uh, so this community has a long time active member of women. And so when I was a bit younger, I enjoyed coding, but felt that I didn't match the skills. I had not, I had to keep it at the career. She worked with me to figure out what job matched my skills and would not take my away from coding such as Python. We had to become role model. Sure, you don't have to be special or amazing, just okay, normal. But I don't know what is normal, <laughs> but but it's okay. So we we have to display our influence that uh, continue to keep in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> let's 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 move on to like the topic of mentorship and support because I've I've heard that you know within this, within this group there's a common kind of pattern o- over that. You know how how important is it? Um, to have a sponsor, a champion, you know, a member of the opposite sex, even um, as a mentor to, to mentor you in technology, in your work, uh, in your uh, career advancement, you know, and how have you found uh, these mentors? So maybe I can ask Michaela. Oh, at the beginning, uh, it's hard to find mentor. <laughs> I mean, it just happens kind of, but at the beginning, uh, I was lucky to, like, um, being an organizer for PyCon PH, I was lucky to have, uh, like, a one-on-one coffee or uh, 
coffee chat with the keynote speakers. So like once a year, at least I get uh, insights from the best people in the Python community. Something like that, like combining your uh, combining your duties as an organizer and then your learning session, <laughs> something like that. And then um, yeah. additionally, I had the boss, uh, our CTO, who profoundly influenced my professional growth. So under his leadership, I was uh, provided a lot of uh, opportunities to grow and it helped me advance uh, from mid-level software engineer to senior. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, a really was, interesting. He's a guy, by, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting point because, you know, I've had a career for about 18 years and all the mentors that happened to um, champion me in an organization were fun, fundamentally men, which is a little bit of a strange concept because, you know, <laughs> but they were all in leadership position, which was a problem <laughs> maybe <laughs> to begin with. But uh, I was saying that, yeah, it's it's one of those things where it is uh, it is interesting. Um, can I ask uh, Joanne and Winnie to contribute? Uh, I worked as a coach at Django Girls Workshop uh, and I experienced uh, has heard me a lot of teaching uh, Python at uh, university and academies. It also presenting and uh, conducting tutorials at PyCon Korea helped me grow my career. Uh, I was able to receive support and encourage uh, and meet many colleagues and positive thoughts. Uh, I, um, I, I, I think I needed to uh, have more event and uh, community uh, meet up uh, more and network. Yeah, absolutely. The networking opportunities at meetups yeah. like this is uh, uh, amazing because that's where you can search and find, you know, keynote speakers and role models and mentors and share together. Uh, Winnie, how have you found your mentor? Um, oh, yes, I think I also have a great mentor in my career. Um, I think I learned the most from my mentor is, um, the importance of being brave enough to ask a question and uh, learning how to avoid asking, uh, unnecess unnecessary or stupid question. He, uh, he also told me the value of thoughtful consideration, uh, before taking any action. So I think it helps me a lot to prevent wasting time. Got it. Awesome. Awesome. And w when it comes to, you know, like uh, we kind of touched on the topic of um, having uh, people in leadership um, help influence and champion our career or advance our career. And we're talking about career advancement, specifically in a competitive market. As a software engineer, solutions architect, product owner, you know, it doesn't matter what position you're in, it's still a competitive market for men and for women because it's based on talent. Now, what are the type of barriers, you know, in the career advancement? And what are the type of, I guess, most that you, you feel are the most common for women in technology and how can that be addressed? Like, what are the things that you've, you've experienced has been um, a, a bit of a barrier into the career advancement part? For me, it's definitely um, disclosing that I'm a mom uh, or disclosing that I'm married. Even though I have full-time live in help, being lucky in Southeast Asia, it's still a little bit of a challenge. Sometimes I feel very uncomfortable to disclose when I'm going for a job or a promotion. So let me start off with uh, Maya. Oh, okay. Uh, if it still exists, a culture that uh, looks at the female students who want to study computer science or themes, uh, that we are. So of course, uh, I think it has been decreasing in century, uh, recently, but I don't think it has gone away yet. So most important is so education and uh, her, she want to study computer science or STEAM industry. So this is a uh, no problem culture. I think so. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, Michaela. Got any things to add? Yeah, um, I'm not sure if this is common, but uh, like uh, 
having to downplay your abilities sometimes uh, in order to not outshine a male colleague, <laughs> something like that. Because, uh, um, I mean, I can take the, if I lack the skill, I can work on it. <laughs> but sometimes you also need to, uh, like, know how to read the room because uh, uh, you might be unintentionally and innocently uh, already st- stepping on someone else's shoe, shoe, something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Joanne and Winnie? Uh, this year's JetBrains survey, uh, under 13, uh, if 15% uh, of women in technology in Korea. Uh, this, uh, I share uh, the Japanese surveys link uh, in chatting uh, chat. Uh, uh, this is a survey. Uh, Korea is the country with the highest uh, proportion of female developer under age of 30. Uh, in the world. This survey data show that the proportion of female programmers under the age of 13 in Korea has reached 50%. Uh, why uh, has this work occurred? It can be assumed that uh, this outcome was not extensible, uh, but the result strategy long-term policies that uh, the South Korea government has implementing since the mid 1990s. Uh, these policies uh, are centered on pro- promoting the gender equality in the workplace uh, with gender mainstream crucial part of the national agenda. Uh, uh, so, uh, education uh, in Korea Block coding similar scratch is learned through school or local communities starting from elementary school. Uh, Korea children are also uh, accustomed to making things using computer. As an adult, uh, there are many program education programs provided in the country. Uh, so there are a, 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 a but, <laughs> A variety of programs uh, where we can run without worrying about tuition. Uh, it also necessary to encourage people to create to learn from the uh, variety uh, of free programs. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think you're you've touched a really interesting point there with policy changes, future generation, and education support. Because without that foundation, there's no kind of tipping point to have the ability to have a fair playing ground for advancement in your career, right? Because then, with the ratios never balanced, and there's like the scale is <laughs> yeah. Winnie, any thoughts? Mm. Uh, I think I, ha- I had the same thought as Sarah. Uh, I guess in uh, in many Taiwanese company, uh, female candidates often encounter some inappropriate questions like uh, during interviews, uh, such as, do you have a boyfriend? Does your boyfriend reside here? Or do you plan to get married? Or plan to give a birth to a child? So like those questions. But uh, I think this bias happens because uh, we also consider uh, a woman must to be linked into a family duty, so they may encounter obstacles in their career if they get married or have children. On the other hand, a men doesn't a men don't face the same questioning because they also assume to be more committed to the company and leading there to have more chances to follow their career goals. But I think this is unfair. I think this unfair difference between genders may create a big barrier or or obstacle for women in advancing their careers. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we've got one more for one last question. Um, What's the advice that you could provide to newcomers, to the women that are just starting their careers or to the daughters that are just entering that STEM program in primary school or high school that want um, a a career or consider a career in technology? What kind of advice could you give young women or girls um, considering considering a career in technology? Let me me start off with Maya. 
Okay. Um, if there is something you want to try, you can try it. I think so. Anything anywhere. So anywhere, it's okay. So if you have any any problems, talk to the priorities or another community. It's okay. And some communities you talk to talk or discussion to another communities. Of course, it can be something over than Python, such as a carrier. It's okay. So you hear from many people who has various background. It's important. Absolutely. Thank you for that. And Michaela? Um, I think I have two. One is surround yourself with people you have meaningful relationships with in the community. And then two is uh, just remember that the system might try to swallow you whole, but uh, you you can work it harder than it's working you. <laughs> That's the solution. Uh, so what I mean, what uh, what do I mean by this? Uh, um, identify your unique strengths and excel uh, in that niche, uh, and then you can use that as a, as an advantage to challenge the status quo. Amazing. I love that. Challenging the status quo is something that we all in, as independents and en engineers, software developers can do uh, by changing the uprooting culture within. Um, Joan and Winnie. Yeah. Uh, I spend a lot of time carrying my, uh, carrying my uh, child. I think we need uh, to establish a program where a child can be cared for in the community. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it all starts with like that community involvement and what we're already doing with the with Pi Ladies, right? Over to you, Winnie. Um, uh, I learned a principle from uh, a role model in Taiwan, uh, my, my role model, uh, who is called Mosky, and she told uh, she told me that a, a role of development is um, first make a wrong, second make a right, and uh, the third one to make it fast. So we don't need to uh, uh, stress about the thing to the per perfect one from the start. You can take it step by step and you will figure out the tricks of uh, development gradually. Yes. Absolutely. I, um, I have something to add that I think is, is, is what my opinion would be. Um, I met this lady in, at a networking event and she actually told me a really good quote. I think it's a Chinese quote, like a saying. And she said to me, you know, Sarah, to attain knowledge, add things every day, but to attain wisdom, remove things every day. And I thought, oh, maybe I can apply that. And I thought it was a, a great thing to, to, to finish off. Um, we have five minutes left and I see that our audience has a couple of questions um, in the general chat. I'm going to pick a question from Ivy Fung. The question, if I am going to start a family is the question I find so irrelevant after the questions how much salary you draw in your last company hmm, that's a that's a definitely interesting comment rather than a question sorry i thought that was a question um but maybe let's try with you know speaking a little bit more about the future trends future generations you know how how do you think um just to finish off you know that we could encourage more women to pursue stem fields at a young age and maybe i will divert this question to Joan. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, next time. <laughs> yeah. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Um, so to recap everything, guys, you know, it's been an absolute pleasure. I hear um, certain certain words and language that we use today about connection, support, and blending in gender, encouragement, you know, starting and instigating or initiating programs um, for young leaders and young women. Um, the ability of being able to be a hybrid working that will support our lifestyle and responsibilities and duties, working from home, um, strong code of conducts, 
participating in being a role model for others, mentoring other women, but also seeking out and not being afraid to ask for help when you need to seek out, whether that is from a, a leader in your company, uh, your, scr- your immediate scrum team, your friends, family, and also the people around you or communities like PyCon. Um, I think what's interesting to see is that we're all here today. We're all part of a, a, a growing movement in the technology um, kind of industry, especially with uh, Python uh, ladies group. And I think that, you know, we're all living and breathing uh, examples of trying to make this community a inclusive, welcoming space in order to discuss ideas, um, advancement, advice, and, and um, you know, tackling the work-life balance. And that's an amazing feat for all of us. So I thank you again for joining and uh, amazing to have everyone so talented in this room. And also thank you to our okay. audience who's been really kind um, and patient throughout this experience. Let me just go back to the live chat and take a look if there is any questions that anybody would like to bring out to the floor as we have roughly three minutes left before we end things. Oh, lots of reactions there. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, I think you can connect with most of us on LinkedIn. So please do check our profiles within um, the event page and the speaker's profile bios. If you're looking for questions, you know, you want to extend that kind of one-on-one chat, we're all open here to provide any advice when it comes to um, learning, experiences, advancement, and anything else. Oh, Carol, thank you. Um, she said, great job on the panel. What are you looking forward to doing in 2024? <laughs> New Year's resolutions, guys. Number one, I have to quit smoking. <laughs> <laughs> feel feel free to add if anybody wants to uh, 2024 New Year resolutions or what are we looking forward to, to doing. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to the next Pie Ladies 2024. Okay. Uh, uh, me, uh, find a new job. <laughs> oh, a Bikela's <laughs> open, open to working. <laughs> oh, Bikela, we've got to connect. I, I, I have a couple <laughs> of things, you know. This, this, is, this is the support structure and this is why we come to network <laughs> at these places, right? Yeah, very happy, very happy to do so. Takonari Suzuki says, thank you, everyone. And the dog. <laughs> wow, dog serpent. Really, yes, we have a, the, that's the official mascot for today, I think. <laughs> uh, okay, thanks everybody. Thank you so much. And like in Thailand, we say when we say goodbye, so what, Thank you. <laughs>